Hi there. This is going to be the first of two videos on how to implement a probabilistic sensitivity analysis in Excel. In this one, we're going to be getting our workbook ready to do a probabilistic sensitivity analysis. And then in the next video, we're going to be looking at the VBA code that you need to get Excel to actually perform the probabilistic sensitivity analysis. So I'm starting here with an example Markov model like we've had before. And at the moment, you'll see that the transition matrix is hard coded and the payoffs are also hard coded. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, change those from being hard coded to being on a parameters sheet. So what I like to do is have the first column in my parameters sheet be the name of a parameter. And then the second column is going to be its live value. So that's always going to be the value that is referred to within the Excel workbook at any given time. And then I tend to have a description uh, is the third column. I think adding a source as a fourth column is also helpful so you can keep track of where you found your various parameters. And for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two columns of possible values which are the deterministic and probabilistic. So let's just <clears throat> sort those column widths out. These are probably gonna be a bit bigger. Okay, right. So let's get our transition probabilities in here. So the ones that we're interested in are these three. So these two you work out from one minus the sum of those. So we've got the probability of going from healthy to diseased, from healthy to dead, and from diseased to dead. So I'll give these fairly simple names. So P healthy diseased, P healthy dead, P diseased dead. Okay. And our deterministic values are gonna be just these ones here. So 0 0.03, 0 0.01, 0 0.05. And you can write in here, you know, transition probability of healthy to diseased, etc. Right. <clears throat> and then we're going to have um, in here a probabilistic value. So these are transition probabilities. So it's natural for us to use a beta distribution for them. And so what I'm going to do is use the beta.inv function you give it a probability which is just going to be a random number between 0 and 1 and then you have these alpha and beta parameters now if I give it uh, parameters of 3 and 97 then it's going to have an expected value of 0 0.03 but it's going to vary around a bit and then here I can do a similar thing uh, but this time I'm going to do 1 and 99, so I have this, the right expected value. Now, picking these numbers means I get the right expected value, but this doesn't necessarily actually represent how much uncertainty I have in these parameters. So uh, you'll actually want to make sure that the distribution you pick reflects your level of uncertainty. You know, instead of doing it like this, I could instead have... Uh, 0 0.3 and 9.7 and that will then be a much more um, higher variance um, value in my PSA than if I do 3 and 97. Uh, but 3 and 97 is nice and easy to understand so that's what I've got for now. Generally you don't need to see all of those decimal places. Okay <clears throat> and now you want your live value to depend on whether you are in the PSA or not. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'll write if PSA, take the probabilistic value, otherwise take the deterministic value. And Excel is gonna go, I don't know how to deal with that because you haven't told me uh, this PSA thing. And so I will create another sheet called control and I will just have this PSA, which is set to zero when I'm not in a PSA, and it's set to one when I am. Now, you just by putting this label next to it doesn't mean Excel's gonna work it out. You have to actually tell it 
that's the name of this particular cell. So we come back here and now it's working. We can control D to fill down. And you'll see that at the moment, PSA is set to zero. So the live value is always the deterministic value when PSA is set to zero. But if I change it to one, you'll see that now the live values are taking the probabilistic values. And yeah, let's just get rid of all the decimal places that we don't really need. Okay, we've got some other parameters as well that we need to uh, to take in. But for now, let's just make sure that these have the names that we've said they're going to have. And there's a quick and easy way to do this. So if you select them, the names and the values, and on Windows it's going to be Control Shift F3. I suspect on Macs it's Command Shift F3. And you should hopefully get a little window it's not showing up on this video unfortunately but it will say create names from values in the and then it has four options one of them is left column it's already selected for you you press OK and that's done so now you can see up here Excel has put those in and we can refer to them now elsewhere in the model so here instead of hard coding 0 0.03 I can say P healthy diseased and here I can say P healthy dead and here P diseased dead great these now need updating because they were hard coded before nice and easy one minus that minus that and one minus that and we can go back and turn the PSA off and now we'll see that these are basically back to looking exactly how they were before We've also got these payoffs that we need to, to code up. So we've got costs and qualies. And let's start with the costs first. So we have costs in the healthy and costs in the diseased states. The cost in the healthy state is 50 and the cost in the diseased state is 1000. Lovely. OK. And we can take the same approach here. but I need to have a random variable in here for that. So one of your options is to use a gamma distribution here. So we'll do gamma.inv, we'll get our rand in there, and then you'll be wondering what your alpha and beta parameters are meant to be. Now, one thing that you can do is say, I want the standard deviation of this distribution to be 20% of the mean. Um, that's not necessarily how much uncertainty you actually have in these costs, but it's not an uncommon approach to take. So 20% is 0 0.2. And what you can do is one divided by 0 0.2 squared is going to be your alpha parameter. And then your beta is going to be the mean value that you want divided by that thing that you just made. So 1 divided by 0 0.2 squared. OK, so this will now have an expected value of 50 and a standard deviation of 10 because 10 is 20% of 50. And I'll fill that down so that we have a similar thing for the cost in the diseased state. And I'll use the control shift F3 to give those names. And we go back into our model. And now this is going to be C healthy. This is going to be C diseased. Okay, now I need to sort the qualies. So I'm going to have a U healthy and a U diseased. And their deterministic values are going to be 0.9 and 0.6 as they were there. Um, and here, for the purposes of this, because they're quite far away from zero, it's pretty unlikely that the true utility would be worse than death. So I don't mind using a beta distribution in this case. And let's do a similar thing of making these add up to 100. Again, doesn't actually mean that that's how much uncertainty we have. 
Um, so don't just assume you can do this and it's the right thing to do, but uh, for this demonstration, it's fine. Uh, and then again, we've got these uh, this formula to say if the PSA is active, take it from column F, otherwise take it from column E. Okay, give those the names. These now are named and we can go back into our model and say equals u healthy and equals u diseased. Great. So now if we switch our PSA on, then our model has got random values for the transition probabilities, the costs and the qualities. And if we go down here to see the average per patient costs and qualities, you'll see that they change. So you can hit F9 to do a refresh and that will change all of your random numbers. <clears throat> so you'll see that, you know, these numbers are changing. And just one last thing that we'll do in this video is set up a PSA results tab or sheet. So our first column is going to be the PSA iteration that we're on. Um, and then I like to have the parameters values going in here as well. So we'll take the P healthy diseased, P healthy dead, P diseased to dead. And then we had C healthy, C diseased, U healthy, U diseased. And then in this column, I'm going to have the actual values for those. It's really good to have these columns for your parameters in here. One, it will help you check that you sampled these parameters appropriately so you can plot a histogram and say, yes, that's what I was expecting. Also, if you come to do things like um, expected value of partial information, uh, these, these parameters are gonna be essential for you to be able to do that. So you may as well just include them at this stage. Okay, and then I'm gonna have some results. And in this case, I'm just gonna take the, the total costs and the total qualities. You could split it up by the um, the different states. That would be a totally reasonable thing to do. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go total costs, total qualities. And then I will grab those into this sheet. OK, so now every time uh, I hit F9, I've got my parameters are updating and my results are updating. You know, you can make this look a bit fancier. It doesn't really matter that much. The important thing about your model is that your model needs to be right, not that it needs to be pretty, uh, is one thing that I would say, but there's nothing, nothing strictly wrong with having a pretty model. So here we go. Uh, this is our model that's now ready to run a PSA and you'll find out how to do that in the next video. Thanks.